Hi everyone, so let's go over this example. Uh, we've got to solve for x, remember? So at the end of this thing, we want to see something like this. x equals some number, right? So the goal is to get x on its own and figure out what missing number will make this equation true, okay? So, um, and real quick, what that means is like, if instead of x you had kind of blank spaces, you know, what number could you fit into these blank spaces to make the thing true? And you can go in there and try to guess, but in this class you're going to try to learn this skill of solving an equation in order to figure it out. So, so we'll start by simplifying both sides and then we'll solve for x. So always simplify both sides first when you're solving these equations and then solve for x. So on the left you got negative 3 minus 5 that's kinda of like if you're in debt by three dollars and you subtract five or you spend five dollars you're now in debt by eight right or you can use your blam blam trick and go sub change that subtract to a plus negative so blam blam it says negative three plus negative five three bad guys plus five bad guys is eight bad guys um, so either way that's negative eight and over here we have simply a positive 3x, a positive 5x, and a negative 10x. And if you want, you can take this subtract sign and go blam blam to make it look like 3x plus 5x plus negative 10x. Three good guys, five good guys, and 10 bad guys makes two bad guys altogether, right? If you want, you can go from left to right and figure out that that's 8x minus 10x. Or you can think, you know, I've got $8, I spent $10, I now I'm in debt by $2. But whichever way, you, on the right, you should end up with a negative 2x. So there's a couple of ways of dealing with adding or subtracting negatives, right? Okay, so we have simplified both sides. Now we have to solve for x. x has been multiplied by negative 2. So to undo that, the inverse operation is divide by negative 2 also, right? So on the left we have negative 8 over negative 2. Negative over negative is positive and um, it's a positive 4. Um, and, and just for fun, just to even understand this part here, I, I, I can't help explaining this, sorry about that, but like what you're asking, like, like if you had something like this, 10 over 5, okay, the answer is 2. Why? Because 5 times 2 gives 10. This times this gives 10, right? So negative 8 over negative 2 is equal to 4. Why is that? Because, because negative 2 times 4 gives you negative 8. You see? So this times this must give this, right? Um, so 5 times 2 gives 10, negative 2 times 4 gives negative 8. That's another way of thinking about it. But yeah, negative over negative is positive, 8 over 2 is 4, right? And on the right, we have negative over negative positive, 2 over 2 is 1, positive 1x. You can write plus 1x if you want to, or just think that's x. So x is 4, or 4 is x. You can write it this way, x equals 4, 4 equals x, same thing, right? And if you were to check your answer, going back to what we talked about at the beginning, check your answer. If we had plugged 4 in for x at the beginning, then both sides would work out to be the same thing. And I can't help doing that just for fun. Um, uh, negative 3 minus 8 minus 5 is negative 8, so negative 8 on the left. And here we have 3 times 4 is 12 plus 5 times 4 is 20, minus 10 times 4 is negative 40. So on the on the right we have 12 and 2, uh, sorry, uh, 12 and 20 is uh, 32 minus 40. $32, take away $40, I'm in debt by 8. So negative 8 on the left, negative 8 on the right, and the whole thing worked out. Um, I don't expect you guys to be checking all of your answers like this, but certainly if you could do some of them, um, and especially if you could do this when you take a test, actually plug your answer back in to the original equation when you're taking a test would be a really good idea. All right?